GEO TV's Firm the Flab Segment 2. This week we're going to be learning about tra training our arms and toning up our triceps and biceps with Daryl Barrett. Let's get into it. Okay, so just Tim showing us a basic dumbbell curl. It's probably the, a good starting point for um, toning your arms. The reason we're using dumbbells, guys, is because if you use a barbell and you have one stronger arm, and everyone tends to have a stronger arm these days, you'll find your, inadvertently your strong arm may be taking over in the lift. This way you're lifting um, separate weights, so it helps compensate for that. What you notice here is Tim's got a nice comfortable standing position, tummy in, chest up. Her upper arm's remaining motionless. All the movement just coming at the forearm, and the forearm's nice and flat with her wrist. That's a good way to isolate your biceps. The other thing you'll notice is that She's um, curling the weights up and they're nice and level. What I try to imagine with clients is that you're curling up a straight bar so they're linked. What you don't want to have happen is have your wrist sag. That's it, good. Once again, rep-wise guys, if you're just new to weight training, look for 12 to 15 reps. Give your muscles and tendons and ligaments a chance to get conditioned. Then once you do that for sort of um, three to six weeks and you find you're making some improvements, then you might look at lowering your reps and just bringing the weight up a little bit. That's good. Breathing's important here as well. General rule for weight training, guys, as you lift, you're exhaling. That's it. And as you lower, you're inhaling. That's good. You might find you get stiff shoulders because if, if, you, if you are used to spending a lot of time on the computer, it takes effort to set them back to where they're supposed to be, but it's just happening more and more frequently with people these days. Most people are around shouldered rather than back, so we just got to work on it. Cool. So the next one we're looking at, guys, is Tim's going to show us a hammer curl that's seated. Um, seated's a good option if you have any back pain or if you find you upper body swings a little bit when you're doing your lifts. This way you take a little bit out of the equation and you can isolate your arms a little bit better. It also means you'll be lifting slightly less weight because you're not in a standing position. The same um, philosophy applies. For this, the team's got their feet quite close. That's handy for this exercise because you need to be able to clear your legs to kill the weights. What we're looking at doing here is um, keeping your tummy pulled in, chest up, looking straight ahead. We're doing a hammer curl, which is a thumb up, thumbs up grip, just like you're holding a hammer. We're going to bring them up, squeeze, and then slow you down to a straight arm but not locked out. That's it. Even slow on the way down to Tim, you're going to really feel your forearm and upper arm doing the lift. And we're looking at breathing out and then in. Good. As you can see, your Tim's not using your lower back to leave the weight up at all. It's a nice straight posture. She's just isolating your arms and forearms there. And that's how you improve the tone in your arms. It's good. Once again, 12 to 15 reps to start off with, guys. Um, and work your way up from there with your weights or your arm um, lowering your reps. That's good. Hammer curl is quite a functional lift, guys. Um, in everyday living, if you pick an object up, um, quite often there's handles on the side of it, you're going to pick up with a thumbs up grip anyway. It's just working those same muscle groups. Another key point here, you can see that your upper arm's not coming forward. I'll just show um, the viewers what the bad technique would look like if you come up to 10 and just bend there. If you're, if you're having to throw your arms forward, you're engaging your shoulder muscle and you're not isolating your arms. So just imagine that someone's wiped some glue on the inside of your arms. That's up, a bad move. Yeah, that's a bad move. So I want to pin your arms to your side and just curl up. Just imagine they glued to your rib cage. That's it, and then just bring your chin up and straight ahead. What the team is showing us here today, guys, is, is a move your triceps. It's called a bench dip. You can use a chair or a sturdy bench, or even a sturdy bed frame. It's great for working your triceps. It's also a compound movement, which means that as she dips, there's movement at two joints. There's movement at the shoulder and the elbow, which is going to give you a result faster. Key points out here, guys, that your Tim's back staying nice and straight as he drops down. Her elbows are tucked in close to her body, so her hands are close to her backside. And she's just lying into a range that's comfortable for her. Um, if you do have existing shoulder problems, be very careful to start this exercise. Um, there are other substitutions we can give you in lieu of it. If your shoulder is healthy, it's a good exercise to bring up your triceps. Sit nice and slow down, pause, and then exhale as you push up. Good. What you're watching for the gym is that your back stays nice and close to the bench. Your movement's up and down rather than swinging forward. Okay, oh. good. As you can see, it's a good challenge, guys. <laughs> and that's just body weight. Excellent. Okay, now your team's going to show us a lying tricep extension. Um, this one's one you can do at home as well. All you need is um, either a, a, an ad mat or a nice padded surface and some light dumbbells. What I'm going to do is you're going to push those dumbbells up straight in line with your shoulders. Now from here, your upper arm should stay fixed. All you're going to do is keep your elbows close to your body as you're going to bend the elbow and lower those dumbbells slowly past your temples and extend up to a straight arm as you breathe out. Good. I've just got my hand here to make sure that your upper arm doesn't travel forward. That's that. Just extending up nice and slow. Even slow on the way down. Pause and extend. Good. 
Now this one works what they call the long heady tricep, which is a really hard part to um, emphasise. It's on the back of your arm there. Key points, the upper arm stays fairly still and it shouldn't travel forward and they shouldn't flare out. Rep wise, we're looking for 12 to 15 reps as well guys, good. Finish up there. Key note there guys, if you're at home you start to get wobbles or shakes or lose form, stop, have a rest and then have a good rest and then start again when you're, when you're feeling more comfortable. Quality over quantity with weight training for toning. Um, never push bad technique. If you find that your technique's faltering, have a rest. If you find it's still faltering, get it checked out by a trainer at a gym. Uh, so your safety is the main concern. Okay, so the next one we're going to move on to is another tricep exercise. It's called a single overhead extension. Really practical, guys, because all you need is a dumbbell and a, a, a sturdy chair. So Tim's going to show us. He's going to bring your elbow up um, by the side of your head. And all we're going to do is keep this upper arm as quick, um, pointing straight up as you can, and extend the weight up from there. Good. Once again, checkpoints here guys, your abs are in, chest up, you can bring your feet out a little bit wider for balance, it's just safety. What we're working is here is this tricep on the back of your arm. Good. Now it is an overhead lift guys, so if you do have any high blood pressure problems, please check with the trainer or your um, physician first, because lifting overhead for reps when you do have elevated blood pressure is um, generally discouraged. Okay, form's gone here, we'll stop there. <laughs>